G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about a project that I mentioned in my sort of weekly ranty vlog thing on my XJet channel about a camera drone. Now I've done a lot of stuff with mini quads, racing drones, all that sort of stuff, but I know there's a big community of people who fly Phantoms, Mavics, um, pretty soon DJI Air and a whole lot of other drones which are not designed for racing, they're designed basically for taking aerial video and aerial photographs. These drones have quite a different requirement to your average mini quad. You know that GPS system on board, they have position hold, they have return to home, they have things like um, point of interest where they'll circle around and all sorts. So they're quite a lot more technology in these camera drones than your average drone. But the big problem we have worldwide is that regulators, mostly who don't like drones, have said, whoa, you know, they're talking about registration and the UK will have to sit an exam. All these restrictions to you using your drones because most of the camera drones, the Phantoms and the Mavics and things, they weigh well over the 250 grams or about four ounces that many, many governments have decided, or many regulators have decided is the cutoff point between a toy and a real drone, a drone that poses a risk to safety and privacy and all sorts of things. So I thought about this and I thought, yeah, well, actually the technology is improving quite dramatically. We're getting a lot of pretty lightweight, you know, quite capable quads. I mean, I reviewed this thing here. It wasn't that very good, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very light, uh, we'll call it a drone, but it's a very light quadcopter. Um, and, but it's no good for using as a camera platform. The, the onboard camera is a CMOS, it's pretty crappy. And if you mount a GoPro on there, it's just gonna be like, wait, it's not gonna exceed the 250 gram mark and it will fly like a brick. So that's no good. There are also other quads like this is the baby hook. I like the baby hook. Lovely little quad for you know buzzing around inside. But again, same problems. A really crappy CMOS camera here. I mean the images I kept, it's all fishbowl and it's only standard resolution, so you couldn't use this for nice aerial shots like you get with your DJI quads. So again, not suitable. And and again, if you put a high definition camera on there, there's no gimbal or anything like that. So it's it's really just not going to do the job. Uh, even though it's pretty good. Uh, now we've got some new stuff coming on the market. This is a quad I'm looking at for EA Sheen. Uh, I'm not reviewing it because it's not, they're going to make some changes to it. It's got a few downsides, but it's, overall the, the potential is quite good with this little quad. You know, it's, it's a lightweight sub 250 grams. It's got a full HD camera with an onboard recording thing, so it'll record. I don't know if it's full HD, you haven't checked yet, but it's got an HD camera with micro SD card, so you can record your video footage. Um, again, it's pretty light, but once again, you know, we've got... The optics on this, it's the fishbowl effect. It's just, you couldn't use it for anything serious in terms of aerial video. And it's not gimbaled, so, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a racing drone. It's a mini racing drone. It's not a camera platform. And if you tried to use it as a camera platform, you would be woefully disappointed. So that's not going to do the job either. So what are we going to do? Um, one of the biggest problems seems to be actually is that, you know, we've got the, we've got the motors, we've got the speed controllers, we've got the flight controllers. What's missing is... The, a decent sized, good quality HD recording camera. And so I was, the reason that something that inspired me to start this project was this from Runcam. It's the Runcam Split Mini. And what that means is it's like a Runcam Split, but it's smaller and it's a little bit lighter. Not a lot lighter, but a little bit lighter. I'll take, show you inside the box. Um, I'm not going to review this right here and now. If you want to see a review, go to RC Shim. He's done a really good couple of videos on this. One flight video, one sort of walk around, show you what it looks like compared to the old split. Uh, so he'll give you some good insight into this. Um, but this is what you get in the box. I'm not unboxing it. I'm just showing you what you get in the box. Totally different thing. <laughs> Trust me. Um, here we go. So this is, uh, here are the optics and sensor. It's a little camera. It's tiny. You can see the size is very small. So it makes it suitable for the sub 250 grams. The camera electronics has been broken up into two boards, two quite separate boards. Uh, basically, it's all the same as the Runcam split, except for the Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi on this, but I mean, I don't think anyone used the Wi-Fi anyway. I think we all just use the um, the menus. And once you set it up, you've set it up. So it's pretty much the same as the split, but it's much minier, minier. Um, and this would make, it's a 20 millimeter stack, so you, you can get the 20 millimeter um, 4 on one ESCs, you get a 20 millimeter flight controller, you can put it all together into a stack and fit it into something. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could use one of the small carbon frames that are bound. I did have one here, but they're so small that they just disappear and I can't find it anymore. Oh, no. oh here we go. It's sitting right in front of me. Okay, something like that. This has already got a Runcam Swift Mini in it, but 
uh, if you put that in there, then you know obviously, and it's also, this is designed also for a um, a 36 mil stack. So, <laughs> but a 20 mil stack is much smaller. So you could actually you know build something like this. But again, this is not ideal for a camera drone because if you look, where, this is going to have the props in view for the field of view on the camera. No, 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 no. So we're going to have to do something different with a frame. Probably something more like a Mavic, where you've got um, your camera is actually out in front of the propellers. Now, obviously, from a collision point of view, that's not as good as this, but this isn't going to be a racing quad. We're not going to build it with a view to racing around the skies at high speed. We're going to build it with a view to replacing the Phantom, replacing the Mavic, replacing even the little Spark to give us a really good camera platform, which gives really good video performance. And it has position hold, GPS assistance, return to home, maybe even point of interest, those intelligent features that make the DJI drones what they are. No collision avoidance. Let's face it, we're never going to fit collision avoidance on something under 250 grams. So we rely then on the fact that if you're really worried, you can put prop guards on. And if you hit something, you'll bounce off it. And it's under 250 grams. You're not going to hurt anything. And you're unlikely to even hurt your drone. So collision avoidance, no, it just doesn't figure in something this small. However, we want a reasonable endurance. I'd like to see at least seven or eight minutes, hopefully 10 minutes. It's a big ask, but I'm going to play around with motors and props. Maybe that even though this drone is, is going to be light, it may not be that small because you're going to get a lot more efficiency turning a larger prop more slowly than spinning little props with 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 kV motors. So a lot of experimentation to be done there. I'll take you on the ride. I'll do some regular updates, especially for my Patreon supporters. I'll get the regular updates in advance so they'll be able to see what's happening. And this isn't going to be a right now project because we've got Chinese New Year, so it's going to take... Uh, four weeks until the Chinese get back to work, so the bits I order will take a long time to arrive. But I wanted to use this opportunity to say, this is a project on the horizon, and I'm soliciting your feedback. I want to know what you think. Now, I got a lot of feedback on my XJet video where I suggested this as a project, and I know a lot of people who watch XJet watch RC model reviews, but then there's a whole different audience that only watch RC model reviews. So if you're one of that RC model reviews audience, then you tell me what you're looking for in a sub 250 gram camera drone. Remember this is a, it's a Phantom 4 Mavic Spark replacement so that you can do all the things, well, most of the things you could do with those drones but without having to register or sit an exam or whatever because it'll fall under the 250 gram minimum and that'll be great. Um, so there you go, that's my thoughts. Now the split, just go back to the split for a moment, the split mini, I was quite optimistic about this but there is one problem with the split mini and that is the optics not very good for this type of application. Now, the original split the optics are pretty good. It's a much bigger sensor. I don't think I have one sitting here at the moment, but the split sensor is bigger and the optics are a much bigger lens. It's a much better looking, well, optically better looking setup. The problem with this, and I'll show you a couple of frames from Mario's review on RC Shim. I've stolen these, so he might get angry, but hopefully he won't mind because I'm going to point to Mario's review video in the description. Go to the description of this video. There'll be a link to Mario's excellent review. Go and watch it. Um, but just a couple of frames from his video showing the difference between the Run Cam 2 Split and the Run Cam 2 Split Mini. Look at the lens flare. See the lens flare there? That indicates that there's light bouncing around inside the camera, inside the lenses of the camera, which create that flare. And that's really something you don't want on a good quality camera drone because it ruins the image. It can look quite arty sometimes, but if you want a flare, you can add it with After Effects. But if you don't want a flare, it's very hard to get rid of. So I might talk to Runcam and see if they're willing to do something a little bit better with the optics. I might try to get them to do a, a better lens setup. And either that, or we may have to go back to the Runcam Split 2 sensor if that will work with this particular set of electronics. I don't know. These are things we have to look at. But yeah, I've just thrown the ball in the air. I want you people to catch it and run with it. Tell me what you want to do. And uh, you know, any suggestions you've got are obviously going to be good. Now this will be a full build series like my ZMR250 build, which I think has had nearly half a million views now. So it's a very popular video. And to that end, I'd say to any manufacturers out there, whether you're in China or the USA or the UK, Europe, whatever, if you think you've got a component for this build, that would be perfect, then let me know because I want to source parts that are readily available and that are easy to use. And if you've got something that fits the bill and it's going to provide the functionality, the performance we want, then I'll want to include it in the build because I'll do a full bill of materials so people can then just go and shop, go through the shopping list, buy the bits and build it themselves like I did with the ZMR250. And we're going to try and keep the build really simple if we can. And I'm pretty sure we can. There's something so satisfying when you build something yourself and then use it rather than just buying it off the shelf. 
And at the moment, this is probably, if we get this sorted, it will probably be the best available camera drone under 250 grams. Yeah, there's plenty of really good capable mini quads, but this is the camera drone. And I am, yes, I am already working on a two axis gimbal for this machine. And hopefully it will all come in with battery under 250 grams, uh, because really a gimbal is pretty important. There is another way you could do it. You could use a 4K camera and use electronic stabilization, but it's getting beyond the scope of a, of a do-it-yourself project. And I wanna make this do-it-yourself. So I've already been looking to source some very, very small motors for the gimbal, and they are available. And maybe we can just do it for the gimbal itself, a 3D printed frame. And therefore, if, you know, if you've got a 3D printer or you know someone with a 3D printer, you'll be able to get them to knock you up one, or I'm sure Banggood will start churning them out by the millions if this project takes off and seems to be popular. So as I say, if you're a manufacturer, a supplier of components that could be used in this build, please let me know. Because if I do use it in the build, then you're probably gonna sell a snot load of them. I mean, half a million times people saw the ZMR250 video. I know that there were an awful lot of people build, built ZMR250s after watching that build video. Hopefully the same will happen with our sub 250 grams camera drone. Let me know what you think and I'll get onto it. But as I say, it's gonna be at least six weeks before we see too much because Chinese New Year, I have to order parts. There we go. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I now have a whole lot of other stuff here, which uh, is on the camera, which I have to go and edit so you can see more stuff. And again, thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are the reason, they are the reason there's only one ad at the beginning of my videos and you should thank them for that. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.